this video I'll be taking you aboard this retired Dutch trawler that has been turned into a livable boat. Now I know how much you, my subscribers, love conversion and refit projects, especially when it comes to explore yachts. So I knew as soon as I saw this boat that I had to jump on board and show you around this interesting vessel. So before I show you around this really interesting and very intriguing boat, if you haven't already, please don't forget to give the video a like and also don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. I've got some really great videos coming up that I'm really looking forward to sharing with you. So don't forget to hit that notification bell. This boat was built in 1965. As well as being a trawler, she was also used as a range boat tasked with keeping the MOD ranges at Shoebury Ness clear of any pleasure boats that just happened to wander into the offshore firing ranges when they were active. An interesting fact for you, when I was 14 years old, I did my school work experience in the radar room at the same ranges. In fact, it was that experience that made me want to join the Royal Navy, which I did two years later. Anyway, back to the boats. She has a length overall of 26.67 metres. Her length at the waterline is 22.38 metres. She has a beam of 5.89 metres and a draft of 4.29 metres. She has a displacement of 147 tonnes. Now, owing to her draft, there are only two tides each year that are big enough to facilitate the boat's movement, and it will be no surprise that they are spring tides. As we head over to the wow back on this trawler, I'm sure that you have already noticed that to get this boat back to her ocean-going self, she will need a considerable amount of work. But when did you last see a semi-converted trawler on the market? If you've been looking for your own trawler yacht conversion or refit project, then this boat is worth some serious consideration. The lines on this boat are what many subsequent trawler yachts have been modelled on, and it's easy to see why. I grew up around fishing trawlers, and there is just something about these capable machines which makes them very appealing to serious all-weather seafarers. Before I take you below deck, I want to show you around the upper deck on what is a very windy day in my home county of Essex here in England. The marina where this boat is located is literally just a few nautical miles away from the North Sea and is located on the same stretch of water that I used to cover when I served in the RNLI. So it's great to be able to bring my camera and drone to this spot to do some filming. If you are interested in the gear that I use to shoot these videos, then be sure to head to the link in the video description or the one pinned in the comments as it's all listed on my website. The boat was last ashore in 2017 when she was hauled out in Ramsgate. When we boarded the boat, you might have noticed that the waterline requires overplating and the broker informs me that this has been quoted at around £25,000 including dry dock fees. From here we can see the port and starboard entrances into the wheelhouse. And make sure you stick around because later on in the video, I will of course be showing you around these areas. The engine room in particular will appeal to many of you who have a marine engineering background. What would you do with this area if this was your boat? I'm sure that it would be perfect for a boat deck, but share your thoughts in the comments below. Let's head forward because I want to start the inside section of this boat tour from the saloon. The boat has a total of nine berths in four cabins, comprising three double berths and four single berths. The owner's cabin on this boat is located forward and the skylight on the foredeck that I'm going to show you in a second is over the owner's cabin, which helps to ensure that the space gets lots of natural light. During her trawler days, you can just imagine her catch being offloaded through that hatch. We will step inside the saloon using this door on the starboard side of the superstructure. As we step inside, we find a wood-fired stove, some seating and a headroom that is around six feet. The large rectangular windows allow lots of light into this space. Generally, it feels like a good area for socialising and has plenty of room. I love the fact that the galley spans a considerable section along the starboard side. As there are no side decks on the main deck, you get a galley that has the potential to be equipped with everything you could possibly need for extended autonomous voyages. 
and the large windows mean that you get a great view whilst you're preparing your scran. As it stands at the moment in here you'll find the fridge, a microwave, a gas oven, grill and stove as well as tons of storage space and ample work surfaces. Check out that view of the marshes and the mudflats. It's easy to see why the South End RNLI has a hovercraft to cover this area. Anyway, let's about turn and head back along the galley. I'm going to show you the aft cabin, which is one of the three double cabins on board this boat. We pass the entrance to the utility room before walking through another area of the boat that can, within reason, be turned into whatever you want it to be. What would you do with this area? Let me know in the comments. So here we are in the aft double cabin which as you can see needs a lot of TLC but this boat is all about a blank canvas that you can really make your own if you wanted to. Um, you've still got the portholes over here, the original ones. This boat was built in the 60s so with all the paneling taken off uh, it looks how you'd expect it to look. But yeah it's a nice space here in terms of the size. And we have an escape hatch it goes up onto the upper deck. Lots of headroom down here. But yeah, it really does feel like you are on an old school trawler. I'm not sure about you, but I would be really interested to know how many other retired trawlers there are out there that are in a situation like this one, where you could basically transform it into your own expedition yacht with obviously a lot of work and a lot of time and effort. If you know of any boats like this, then feel free to get in contact with me. You'll find my details in the video description. Let's now head down to another cabin, which is located further aft and below deck. This cabin would probably be well suited to guests who perhaps do not get on particularly well with gnarly sea states, as it is located further aft. Again, there is plenty of headroom, but the space is a bit darker as there are fewer portholes in this section of the boat. However, they still let in enough natural light, so you do not have to rely too much on artificial lighting. The boat is currently being used, so I'm going to refrain from opening cupboards and nosing around too much. Let us head back up the stairs, passing the galley, which will be to our right, and the entrance to the utility room on our left. We're going to continue heading straight up to the wheelhouse. Folks, if you haven't already, please don't forget to subscribe. I really want to try and get to 100,000 subscribers ASAP because the more subscribers I get, the more boats I can get on. In this traditional wheelhouse, we find a seating area to the right with the helm position located over on the port side. Behind the captain's chair is a navigation station. The boat does come with a Sailor VHF set, a Furuno GP500 GPS, a Robertson Norway Auto Helm, Coden Radar, AIS and a Florin Chart Plotter. So if you did buy this boat and moved her out of a current resting place, then you have the basics needed to navigate to your preferred shipyard. And folks, remember, if you are looking to update any of the nav or communication gear aboard your boat, then be sure to check out my nautical Amazon stores. You'll find the link pinned in the comments and also in the video description as well. Let's now head back down below deck because I want to show you the utility room and the engine room. Here you'll notice the Osmo Pocket 3 doing its thing when it comes to the autofocus. This is the first video that I've shot with this brand new camera. So let me know in the comments what you think and if you want to grab one for yourself then make sure you head to the link in the video description. In the utility room we find another fridge, washer and dryer and back along here we have another cabin. And now the moment that I know many of you have been waiting for, let's descend into the engine room. By the way, if you've purchased Apple's new Vision Pro headset and you're watching this video on the headset, let me know in the comments because I bet it makes you feel like you are on board with me. Okay, so this boat is fitted with a 300 horsepower Gardner engine, which is very similar to the engine that was fitted to the other retired trawler that I recently featured on my YouTube channel. Although that 8L3B engine was a 230 horsepower. If you have not seen that video, you can find it on my channel. The engine on this boat was installed by Gardner in 1986. 
when you're coming down here, it really does feel like you've gone back in time. It's almost as if, as if everything has been left exactly how it was the last time this beast was fired up. The boat has a maximum speed of 11.5 knots with a cruising speed of 9 knots consuming 25 litres of fuel per hour. The boat has enough capacity for 17,600 litres of fuel which is about 4,650 US gallons. When it comes to her range I couldn't find any published figures in the public domain but after a few basic calculations I worked out that this boat would be capable of a range of around 6,500 nautical miles depending of course on load and conditions. She also has a bow thruster which is powered by a Peugeot engine, a 26 kVA three-phase generator and has enough capacity for 7,000 litres of water which is around 1,850 US gallons. But what do you think of this engine room? I'm especially interested to read your thoughts if you have a marine engineering background. For the final part of this tour, we're going to head forward and I'm going to show you around the owner's cabin. To get down to the owner's cabin, we're going to walk through the saloon and head down this staircase. As mentioned earlier on in the video, there is somebody staying on board at the moment, so I have to be really conscious not to get them in the shot and to keep out their personal belongings, so excuse the camera work. Here we have the double bed which is on the starboard side of the cabin and thanks to the shape of the hull you get lots of storage space down here. The chain lock has actually been converted into a walk-in wardrobe. As you can see there's more than enough room in this owner's cabin to keep all your valuables locked away. There's also lots of natural light thanks in parts to the skylights which we saw earlier on in the tour. Whereas the other cabins currently share a bathroom, the owner's cabin has its own ensuite, which can be found on the port side. I'm not sure about you, but I've never seen a shower. There's also a jacuzzi, but there's also somewhere where you can sit down and get a massage thanks to the six water jets on either side. I've definitely not seen one of them before. Let me know in the comments if you have. Standard salute. During my afternoon aboard this trawler, the broker told me that all of the furniture and appliances will be left on the boat and will be included in the sail. He also confirmed that there is heating and hot water throughout the boat. If you do happen to buy this boat, then feel free to reach out to me on my socials or via my email address because I would be really genuinely interested to know what happens to this boat where she ends up and what is done with her. Before we head back out onto the upper deck, let me show you the guest head and guest shower, both of which are located on the port side of the vessel. Here is the spacious head. It has its own porthole in here as well, so you do get some natural light in the area. The guest shower is located aft of the head. One of the reasons why I'm keeping the camera pointing over this way is that there are guests on board the boat and I'm conscious of the fact that they probably don't want to appear in this video. So as you can see, this boat does have quite a bit of potential. Trawler style yachts are becoming more popular. And for someone like me who loves this genre of boat, then it's music to my ears. Yes, it does need work, but anyone who has seen the video that I made about the former Dutch beam trawler that comes in at just under 50 meters LOA will know what can be achieved with the right vision, budget and team. So thanks for joining me on this really unique tour of this very interesting boat. At the time of making and uploading this video to my YouTube channel, this boat is currently listed for sale. If you want to find out more, I'll leave a link in the video description. So head down to the bottom of the video description, click on that link, and it'll take you to the listing broker's website. I'd like to say a massive thank you to the broker for allowing me to come on board and show you this boat. And also I'd like to say a big thank you to the owner as well. If you've got a boat you'd like me to feature on my YouTube channel, then feel free to get in contact with me. You'll find my contact details in the video description. Until next time, fair winds and following seas. If you enjoyed this video, then I'm 99.9% .9 certain that you'll love the video I made about Scintilla Marie, a former beam trawler that has been converted into a luxury expedition ship. 
Actually, at the time of making this video, you can charter this boat as well. If you want to watch the full yacht tour video that I made when she was launched at the Diamond Muscant shipyard, then be sure to click on the link that will appear on the screen in front of you now, assuming you're watching this on a computer. If you don't see that link appear, then head to the link in the video description, click on that and then scroll down to my Truly Yacht playlist. You'll find this video as well as lots of other videos in that particular playlist. And if you enjoyed this video, I'm sure you'll also enjoy the video that I made about this beautiful trawler yacht that was also built in the 60s. And at the time of making this video, this boat is currently listed for sale. Again, head to the video description, click on the link and then look at the trawler yacht playlist. If you are one of my channel members, then I really appreciate the support and you would have seen this video a day before anybody else. If you'd like to join my channel as a member, which is a bit like YouTube's version of Patreon, then you've guessed where you'll be able to find the link, yes, in the video description. If you give the video a like now, then it will really help with its reach, and also don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. If the two video recommendations that I made don't tickle your fancy, then I'll let the YouTube algorithm pick two for you, which you can find in front of you now.